Good evening. This is Micah Mitchell with Madison County Weather Updates. Um, it's about 9.25 p.m. I just want to take a quick, uh, do a quick video here. It's pretty impromptu, so it's not going to be very organized. But I just want to talk about what's going on with uh, with our system here and what's uh, left of this uh, ragged uh, mess that we've had. We're taking a look here at the uh, GR Level 3 radar. Uh, we're having to use the North Webster radar because Indianapolis is down. But to still get a good imagery, we can see uh, the heavy uh, icing that has run right along I-70 and just south of it. We had quite a bit of sleet. Now we've got some uh, light freezing mist. You can see the majority of the snow has uh, hung out up north. There are a couple of uh, 1.5 inch reports up there around, uh, you know, Huntington and uh, and Fort Wayne. So the the snow kind of stayed farther to the north. And really the only model that had that, we don't forecast by the model, but the only model that really saw that coming was the NAM. And kind of what I put in my post earlier, it's it's really has been, not been very good. It's been too dry on most of these systems, but, you know, this is a case where the blind squirrel got the nut, or at least the way it looks right now. One thing I want to note is as this, this dry slot works in here, and I'll show you a water vapor loop here in a minute, uh, even though there are no radar returns here, there is still very light uh, freezing mist. Little, a few snowflakes mixing in with it. But um, even though the radar is not really showing much, uh, in this dry slot we will still have a risk for just very light freezing mist and freezing drizzle. Yeah, It won't amount to much, but on untreated surfaces, especially on top of the sleet, uh, it's really going to be a problem. It's, uh, in fact, uh, right before I got on here, I just saw that uh, Franklin Lapel schools are on a two-hour delay tomorrow morning because of the road conditions. So I would expect that in rural districts that uh, you know you see some delays. Maybe even you know when we get to the morning, maybe you know some e-learning or or closures, uh, depending on how much freezing drizzle we get in addition overnight. So let's take a look here at. Uh, Let's go to the uh, BAM weather porthole. Um, I have permission to use this once in a while. So I, this uh, the weather porthole is an awesome app. I'm on the, the website here, but uh, um, porthole is an awesome app. And of course, something's going on with my computer and it's not wanting to load this radar image right. Here we go. Let's try to catch this up here. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm having some uh, internet issues here. At any rate, here you can see the majority of our, our main stream of precipitation kind of streaming up here. Out here in Ohio is, um, let me turn this a little bit, out here in Ohio is uh, where the majority of the precipitation is now. The heavy sleet that we had earlier has now moved off to the east. And again, even though there's not anything shown on radar out here, there is still some freezing uh, mist and drizzle going on out here all the way back into Illinois. So I uh, do need to keep that in mind that that will linger for uh, for a while. And we also need to watch back here if we're going to get any kind of snow. It's probably going to come from this back here. And that would probably be pretty light. And maybe a dusting to an inch. I mean, maybe. But really what's happening is the low, low pressure is down here kind of just off of the screen and everything is streaming moving to the northeast so this is also going to try to move to the northeast so odds are the snow is going to bypass us but we still just can't rule out that it would uh, come through here and uh, bring us a dusting to you know half inch or an inch in the pre-dawn hours and maybe some lingering flurries or, or mist lasting even into the daylight hours tomorrow until the cold front gets through and squeezes uh, squeezes all that out. So here's a look at the, uh, from the College of DuPage, look at the uh, mid-level water vapor. And uh, hopefully I don't have the issue on here I was just having on the porthole. Uh, this has been loading for a little bit, so hopefully we're good. At any rate, uh, here's, you can see these uh, yellows. This is dry air just streaming up into the, into our region, yeah, we're right in here. So you can see the heavier precipitation out here in Ohio 
Now all that moving away, there's a, a line kind of down here and a little bit of a frontal line down there uh, with the uh, low pressure. But we're, we're getting this uh, dry air streaming in and it's choking off the majority of the precipitation. But again, at the surface, we still have a lot of moisture and the colder air aloft is gonna squeeze that out. So this freezing mist and uh, drizzle, unfortunately, it's, it's probably gonna stick around uh, through the overnight hours. Um, um, here, here's a look at the NAM 3K. I really wasn't gonna look at this much, but let, let's back up here. So here we are. This is at what the NAM 3K would have at 10 o'clock. A lot of the, again, a lot of this out here that has an Illinois. Again, the NAM was the most stingy of all the models. It had us, it had in our area getting some, uh, some a couple of tents of sleep, which is what happened. Uh, freezing rain staying down closer to I-70, which is what happened. And it had the accumulating snow way up in northern Indiana, which is what happened. So again, the blind squirrel got the nut on this one. Uh, name hadn't been worth a whole lot, but it, it got this. But even as stingy as it's been, uh, it's still got snow modeled out here in central Illinois. And according to MPing reports that I was just looking at, uh, a lot of this is still freezing mist. So freezing drizzle. So even the stingy NAM has got probably too much snow on the southern end. But uh, nonetheless, we'll take a look at it. We'll jump ahead. This is at 1 a.m. and still kind of see these patchy, you know, just freezing mist and mix in here. We could get some snow mixing in, but again, it's probably not gonna amount to much. And then we jump ahead another three hours and this is by 4 a.m. and it's already got the snow off to our north and uh, really kind of bypassing us. Again, even though there may not be radar returns, there may still be some flurries and uh, mist hanging around until the front passes by in the morning and, and really finally moves all the moisture out at the surface. So um, we'll take a look at one more thing just for fun here before I get off of here. Again, I don't forecast by the models. Don't take this verbatim at all. Uh, here's a look at the um, EPS, which is the European Ensembles. And um, what I want you to notice is, is trend. Don't don't look at, pay attention to numbers if you can even see it from my phone video. But you can see there's a, a pretty significant trend warmer by next week. Um, so we're we're going to be probably in the 40s by Sunday. Uh, mid 40s Monday Tuesday and um, I think we're going to be warmer than uh, even what this model has by mid to late next week so this you know has a staying in the 40s through Thursday and then jumping up to the mid to upper 50s next Friday and Saturday I think we actually may be in the 60s so uh, we'll, we'll see how that plays out you know we're in a transitional season and you know sometimes the pattern doesn't do what it advertises one last thing I want to point out also while this is on here, notice this red trend line right here. That's the, the average temperatures. So right now as of uh, February 24th, our average highs, you know, around 39 degrees or so. Actually, I think we're probably here for Anderson is uh, closer to 40, but nonetheless, you can see where we are here. And then by March 11th, the average high is now up at like 47 or 48. So, March warms on average by 11 and a half degrees. So the reason I point this trend out to you is you'll probably see a lot of temperature anomaly models if you follow a lot of different weather sources. And you'll see some that, you know, out, out in this time frame or got all these blues on them and oh, here comes the cold. But you gotta keep in mind that what's five degrees below average right now is around 35 in two weeks five degrees below average is going to be you know, 42, 43. So it's all relative. We're in a very quickly warming time of the year. So beware of the blues on the temperature anomaly maps because they can be deceptive as to how cold it is. You need to look at the numbers and actually see how much colder than average it really is. Don't just see blue and, and panic and think winter's coming back. Um, so with all that said, and. Um, this is Micah Mitchell with Madison County Weather Updates. I want to thank all of you who um, trust this page for your weather. And I thank the handful of you who uh, contribute to this page. 
financially and help support it and keep it going. And, and we got 12,000 followers. Hopefully we can get more to, to uh, help support this page and we can start doing a little better stuff. So um, in the meantime, Neo, thank you all. And uh, this is Michael Mitchell with Madison County Weather Updates. Have a great night.